Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to prompt users to rate your mobile application using Ionic Framework. Uh, in particular, this tutorial is aimed for Android and iOS. So often what you'll want to do when you when you build an application is you'll want people to rate your app. They don't they don't often do this out of their own free will because it does take time. Um, but when you do add a pop-up asking them to rate it with direct links to the App Store, it can be a little more convenient for your users. And yes, some people might think this is a little annoying, but it, it varies on how you use it. There, you're certainly able to use it in a fashion that is not very annoying to users. So what we're going to do is this, this tutorial is going to be, uh, there's going to be several components that are required for this tutorial. So we're going to be making use of the Apache Cordova native dialogues. And if you've been keeping up with my tutorials, uh, I did a tutorial on this previously. You may want to read up on it a little bit there, but it's not, it's not entirely necessary. Uh, another thing that we're going to be using is we're going to be using the AngularJS library called ng special offer. And this is going to be the library that's responsible for displaying the pop-up, the, the prompt for users to rate your application. And it's pretty convenient. The final thing that we're going to be using in this in this uh, app is ng storage. It's a nice kind of wrapper for local storage. Again, if you've been keeping up with my previous tutorials, you'll know that I've done a tutorial on this already. And this one's definitely one that you should look into because it's quite useful for your mobile applications. So to start things off, let's go ahead and create a fresh Ionic Framework project on your desktop. navigate into that project and we're going to go ahead and add the Android platform. Now you can go ahead and add iOS as well but for simplicity uh, I'm only going to be demonstrating Android. Uh, if, you're, if you're planning on doing iOS you will need a Mac to do iOS. Alright with it added uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to add the native uh, device dialogs the Apache Cordova plugin. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so that plugin is now added. So the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and copy in our two JavaScript libraries. I've already gone ahead and downloaded them, um, but I will be including the locations to these files in the written portion of my blog. So don't be alarmed. You can either Google search for ng special offer and ng storage or you can uh, go to my written blog. So we're going to go into our www and the JavaScript folder and then we're going to go ahead and copy these files in there. So with that said and done, let's go back into our into our text editor. We're going to go ahead and open up the project. And then we are going to open the www, and we are going to open index.html. So what we want to do here is we want to go ahead and add our two JavaScript files. So we're going to do script source equals js slash ng special offer dot js, and then script source equals JavaScript and then ng storage.min.js. So, with those two libraries included in our project, the next thing that we want to do is we want to add ng special offer into our app.js Angular module directives list. So, let's go ahead and add this. All right. At this point, we are ready to use this uh, this feature. So let's go ahead and clean up the, the app.js file a little bit. I'm going to say var ionic app equals that. 
and add a semicolon there. Again, this is just uh, something that I like to do. Um, it cleans it up, makes it a little more readable. All right, so all of our work is going to be done inside of our run function. Um, you can always do it in a controller, it's up to you. So going here, what we want to do is we want to add special offer to this list. Because that's how we're going to be calling it. And then inside the ready at the bottom, we're going to do the following. We're going to say special offer dot init. And then it accepts an object here. So we're going to say ID. And we're going to go ahead and give it an ID. So my app name here. And then we're going to go ahead and give it a version number. So something to note here, the version number is more important for iOS applications because for iOS, your users have the ability to, ability to rate each version of your application. Android users don't really do that. When you rate an app on Android, it overrides your previous rating for every version. So we're going to go ahead and add a version here just for the heck of it. It doesn't really matter. Um, for, for your production application, you might want to dynamically get the version number. But for simplicity, we are going to just use a constant here. I'm going to say show on count. I'm going to say five. So that means that after the fifth time that the application has been opened, then we are going to show our rate prompt. You don't want to show it too early because you want to give your users a chance to actually use the application before they make a decision. If you show it too early, they're going to get mad and they're probably going to rate you poorly. So let's go ahead and add a title. This is the title. We're going to go ahead and add some text to this dialog. We're going to say, please rate if you enjoy this app. Now we're going to add some button labels. We're going to say agree label. And we're going to say rate app. We're going to say remind label. And this is going to be if they don't want to rate it now, but they want to rate it later. We're going to say remind me later. And then the decline label. And if they click on this, they'll never be prompted to rate the app again. Well, at least for this version for iOS. And of course, you don't have to use the versioning for iOS. It's up to you. Um, you could just leave it constant, and they'll only ever be asked to rate it for once in the whole lifetime of the of them owning the app. So after the labels, you want to go ahead and create callback functions. So for the on agree, first I'm going to go ahead and write out all the functions before we start doing stuff. We're going to say an on decline. And we're going to say on remind me later. All right. So on the decline, we're not going to do anything. User declined. You can do whatever you want, but for the purpose of this example, we're not going to do anything. Same for the on remind me later. We're going to say uh, user prompted for reminder. And what, what the default is, is it will remind you again after five more uses. Um, so it won't immediately ask them to rate it again. The next time they open up the app, it'll wait five times. So now we're going to get down to business with the on agree. We need to determine what happens here. So this plugin, if you look at this, if you look at the source code, it was obviously coded with iOS in mind, not necessarily for Android. So they do have a nice feature for showing the app store on iOS but not for Android. So let's go ahead and do the following here. We're going to say if device.platform equals iOS, then we're going to say window.open, and then we're going to say special offer.app store URL. And then we're going to 
to use whatever our app ID is. Since this is a new app, I'm just going to give it randomness here because we're not really going to be using it. So what this does is if the platform is iOS, then we're going to go ahead and open up the App Store and direct you uh, to the actual app in the iTunes App Store so that way they can read it. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do else. Now technically you could do else if and say if it's Android, but we're going to assume that if it's not iOS, it's Android. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do window.open and then we're just going to go ahead and type in the exact URL. So we're going to say market details ID equals and then I'm going to just give it some random um, one of my one of my random apps. Again, this is because they didn't the creator of this plugin didn't uh, consider Android, so we're just going to consider it for them. And you can always edit the, the library if you want; it's up to you. So let's go ahead and save that. So we're at a point now where we're ready to actually test it and see if it works. So back in your terminal, let's go Ionic, build Android. I probably should have set the show on count to something lower than five, but that's all right. I'm going to just go ahead and we're going to open up the app five times once we install it and see what happens. All right, we just built the app. Now we're going to go ahead and install it. All right, so now we're going to open it. All right, so it, the UI didn't render correctly. That means that we have an error somewhere. So we're going to open up and we're going to view the logs and see, I probably made a typo somewhere. Unknown provider, local storage. All right, so I probably um, made a slip up somewhere. There's a couple of things that uh, could have went wrong. So hold on. Yeah, so here's what we want to do here. We want to go ahead. First, let's try this. This would be the easiest solution. Let me go ahead and rebuild that. So what happens is it, it wasn't detecting our ng storage because it wasn't it wasn't necessarily added anywhere inside of the, either the library or our code. So with it rebuilt, let's go ahead and open up the app and hopefully we're better now. Yeah, we are better now. So it rendered correctly, and that's because I added the ng storage. Uh, directive into our app.js because ng special offer requires it right here. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and close the app and we're going to open it a few more times uh, in order to get that nice dialog prompt. All right, it's not showing up. So maybe, maybe we have more errors that we don't know about. So there are actually two problems um, which were causing errors when we were testing. Uh, the first problem is that inside of the actual ng special offer library, uh, there is a document dot add event listen. Uh, this is never actually called. So because it's not called none of our show dialog code appears. So what you can do is you can actually remove this and it'll work fine. And it'll work fine because we are making our calls to this library from inside the ready command. So it's waiting until all plugins and 
and libraries are ready before making any calls to the plugin. So that's why removing it would, would uh, let it work. The second problem is that we need to include the Apache Cordova in-app browser in order to reach external URLs, regardless of what kind they are. So it's not a, it's not a big deal. Uh, you can easily add it. You should be able to add it by doing Cordova plugin add org.apache.cordova.inapp browser. I believe that's the command. Yeah, it is. So by doing that, let's go ahead and give it a shot now by doing those two changes. So let's go ahead and build it. And then we are going to install it. And I went ahead and I changed it to three instead of five. So let's go ahead and open our app. We open it once, twice, three times. And here's the prompt that your user is going to see for Android. It's going to look a little different for iOS. Uh, let's go ahead and see what happens when we click Rate App. And it didn't work for whatever reason. It didn't recognize the URL scheme, probably because this is a simulator and I don't have the Android uh, Google Play app on my device and the only way to use custom URL schemes is to have the actual app on your device that makes use of the scheme. So if you really wanted to test it, you could do the whole HTTP, uh, HTTP URL. It's up to you. But on an actual device, this should work fine because I think it's a requirement of all devices to have the Google Play app on it. And for iOS, it's going to do something similar. The plugin uh, takes care of the URL. And if you go into the plugin source code, it's this down here. And it uses its own URL scheme. So by doing that, it makes uh, it a lot more likely that users are going to leave a rating on your application. And again, even though that the library didn't work out of box, we really didn't have to do much changes uh, to get it working. And it, it is pretty convenient. The, the code is open source. It, uh, it, it makes a difference. I use it in my apps. So if you've liked this video, uh, please go ahead and support me by subscribing to this YouTube channel.